Warning: This episode contains graphic mentions of transphobic and homophobic violence. Listener discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of Women in Work: Why It Matters, brought to you by the International Center for Research on Women and Feminism in India. I'm Purnima. I'm Nilanjana. We are hosts and for today's episode we're going to be talking about something very interesting. we're going to be talking about how gender and caste impact work now it's no secret that women and people of gen- different genders and sexualities are often disenfranchised due to their gender caste class and migrant identity barriers to access to decent and paid work are often compounded by intersectional identities discrimination harassment and biases are the usual roadblocks faced by people especially those from vulnerable and marginalized communities while pursuing meaningful employment You're absolutely right, Purnima. And this discrimination starts from childhood itself. The absence of a safe space at home or outside, the lack of a healthy childhood to adulthood transition, the absence of equal opportunities in education and skills create debilitating conditions for the person with intersecting marginal identities in terms of both life and livelihood. At present, even with new laws such as the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act 2019 and the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Rules 2020, the partial reading down of Section 377 of the IPC, there are still no safeguards and security measures for the Indian LGBTQIA+ community with respect to protection of employment, income, security against discrimination and provision of equal pay. Exactly Nilanta and there are many roadblocks and systemic biases against women and persons of diverse gender and sexual identities the current pandemic and economic turmoil have only made it worse for the community with respect to access to earning opportunities and livelihoods plunging them into a more severe survival crisis and besides the social stigma persons of diverse gender and sexual identities already face during covid-19 that means these last two years They've also faced multiple instances of violence and abuse like bullying, harassment, threats at their workplace, domestic violence in their households, interruptions in hormonal therapy, gender discrimination and violence at testing centers and so on and so forth. Caste, class and other intersectional identities have only worked to compound the marginalization of these communities even further, doubling the impact of the barriers to access to service provision. In today's episode to discuss in depth the link between gender, caste and work, we have with us our very special guest, Grace Banu. Grace is a transgender activist and a leading voice in the anti-caste movement. As the first registered transgender woman to enroll in an engineering college, Grace rewrote history. She has been advocating for Dalit and transgender rights, demanding along with other transgender people for reservation based on gender identity as well as caste. Welcome to the podcast, Grace. We're so excited to talk to you today. Thank you. I'm super excited to talk with you. So excited to have this conversation with you today. So without any further delay, Grace, I think we should start right away. And I know this is a little bit of a broad question, but how do you think gender, caste, and work are linked with each other? So gender, caste, and work. Um, this three of them um, is obviously it's, it's it's completely linked with each other because when we say the caste. you know when we, when we give the job opportunity for a person um, it's based on you know automatically caste is everywhere so uh, it, it it will give a caste based job also there you know so many years so many persons you know the, the generations so many generations are so doing the same work so because of their caste yeah and when we talk about the gender so when uh, a job particularly uh, it's 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 uh, mark mark for the a particular gender like a male you know this this job opportunity it should be male this job a job opportunity it should be a, be a female when we when we talk about the work so when we talk about the work workspace also have a gender so workplace have work and gender and caste this three of them have a transphobia homophobia islamophobia all the things but this all the things it's it's linked with each other so i want to share one example uh, when a trans woman who gave the interview in the uh, media 
so all the tv the, the print media and the uh, social media uh, you know celebrated that work the that is you know a trans woman who was bari uh, who is do uh, who is doing buried work so uh, in the burial ground so all the people are you know celebrating wow this uh, this is amazing this uh, you know the trans woman wants to uh, live with a dignified life and this guy uh, this uh, trans woman doing this and all the print media and the social media they are all celebrating yes when we see you know when we look at the uh, generally we are all celebrating this but when we look now we, when we see the uh, now when we change the our vision in the name of you know caste so that trans woman doing the pare work and before her father doing that and before her grandfather also doing that and how it's going to be dignified work you are absolutely and right this this is going to you know it uh, generationally they impose that work to the that trans person so when we do the when when the trans person doing that it's not a dignified work the trans person can you know, finish eighth standard so government should give the job opportunity for them so many clerk, clerical posts are there official you know the the uh, office assistant post is there why they don't uh, you know they don't want to uh, give that that kind of job so here we see gender and caste both are having super kind of role and both are having super kind of oppression for the trans community so when we when we go to access the work ye jo so many uh, job opportunities are denied because of my gender identity and in the interiorly when a few person got a job opportunities i mean the people who are having privilege those people getting job opportunity they are all savarna community trans and dba community trans doesn't have any kind of privileges doesn't have any kind of access to education access to you know the, the public space under privileged people it's super 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 you know uh, hard to access this kind of space i i hear you grace and you know it it's reminding me of a lot of things so often a lot of the mainstream you know the uh, mainstream people would say that you know a lot of transgender people are just begging on the streets or they are involved in sex work my first question is first of all i mean of course there's this whole question of what is wrong with sex work that that could be a question that uh, that can be asked but beyond okay. that the other question is that you know what other opportunities are there for these people yes. in fact exactly so i have seen exactly. a lot of like uh, you know koti people in bengal we yeah. call them koti i know. You know so some of them op- you know they start they try to open tea stalls etc but they face so much of harassment by the police by yeah. the state by general public so it's so yeah. difficult and uh, and and not only transgender people look at the binary of male and female as you said yeah. for women we have struggled for 100 years 100 to, yeah. to, to yeah. 100 years to get, get access to education to get access to certain kinds of jobs otherwise even women were always uh, 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 told that you know you have to be at home and cook and care for the child so all of this and then once you bring in caste uh, then that becomes even more complicated but yeah coming to the next issue which you also mentioned that you know the discrimination doesn't begin at the job at the work site only the discrimination begins in your access to education in yes. your access to skills in your access to learning and that is also determined by caste and by yeah. gender location so can you reflect a little bit on that so access to the education so here when we talk about the education it's a larger space so that larger space also we need to access and we don't have a privilege to access those kind of uh, spaces because for example when we talk about the dba community trans so dba do, do you think all the dba community trans getting all kind of education qualification no not at all so the db uh, when we talk about the dalit bagujan adivasi community trans people they are having you know compare with the savarna people compare with the savarna trans people they don't have privilege to enter into the classroom in the classroom in the school they have faced so much discrimination in the name of caste and gender 
so here i want to talk about you know when we talk about the education the savarna trans and the dba community trans both are facing you know both are facing gender oppression but particularly dba community trans they are facing double amount of oppression in the name of caste and gender because their their family circle doesn't have a education opportunity their you know the generationally the so many trans people generationally doesn't have a opportunity to access the education to enter into the classroom and when when we fight with the uh, you know to get the education when we enter into the classroom in that classroom also have a transphobia and the casteism correct and the casteist people and the transphobic people are surrounding with us if you person if you if you if you human the good, a good person good human have a peaceful circumstance peaceful you know the the uh, uh, surrounding and that students have uh, you know clear thoughts and uh, all the space like, like safe space so when we created a safe space for the students and that students you know studying well and they are, they are focusing on the studies and they don't want to you know they don't concentrate with the others thing but here when we talk about the dba community already we are facing caste discrimination but when when the changes shows my gender identity my you know when when my body shows my gender identity and they are you know we are facing verbal abuse mental mm-hmm. abuse physical abuse and sexual abuse so here when we talk about the education or the education have the protection from this four kind of abuse too no not at all you close all the doors but you are saying you know you should go you should go you should go outside you should go outside how do we go you close all the doors like education employment and protection every doors are closed that's why we are doing baking and sex work absolutely absolutely and yeah, absolutely. why only classroom you know i am just thinking that sometimes you know that lack of safe space is at home itself so yes. so many transgender yes. children are forced to run away because of abuse at home and then forget education it's a question of survival basic survival yeah. is not ensured for them so when we talk about the farm you know uh, when we talk about the education here one is school and another one is you know uh, school colleges and another one is family you know when we when we go to the you know when we left from the home we are going to meet the school the school and colleges and the civil society you know and through that from when 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 i left from the, within the family cycle i am facing so much of discrimination you know that is mental abuse they are torturing us they are you know they want to convert you know they 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 put me in the conversion therapy but our community our dba community trans people who does in about what is conversion therapy but the people the family people they, they are doing they put me in the you know for example for my my life when i told to my parents to you know my, my about my gender identity immediately they put me in the mental asylum you know my parents does not know about anything you know they uh, they don't know but the society thought uh, the, the, you know teach them yo know, if, if you are if your children having this kind of issues you should uh, go to the psychiatrist and immediately whatever you know um, uh, the family sentiment and all the things they are you know, they put they put me in uh, they put us in the uh, you know the conversion therapy and the conversion through that the conversion therapy as you know 2019 lockdown during the lockdown a uh, uh, person who committed suicide because of the conversion therapy and the various states are you know now burning the, uh, the, the ban the conversion therapy but it's not fully again when we say the ban conversion therapy okay the people who are having privilege the people who are ha- you know speaking in the well known english the people who are having the caste privilege class privilege all the kind of privilege those people obey that and those people knew about what is the you know the ba- ban conversion therapy the people who doesn't have uh, any kind of privileges the people who are living in the in the you know interior rural areas the rural areas parents do you think those parents know about the conversion therapy they don't know what is you know what changes my children having in the you know in their bodies and here 
the lack of educating educating those kind of people it's super kind of oppression each and every trans person who are in the, in the field they should fight they should fight with the parents they should fight with the you know uh, the students who are having transphobic thoughts they should fight with the uh, teachers so the first when we talk about the public space accessing accessing the public space like education and employment first you should create a safe space for the trans people when we talk about it at a safe space it's not only sabarna trans people safe space it should be in the gb all community trans trans people you're absolutely right i think grace you uh, like very rightly mentioned that not just gender but like caste is so insidious that even if we have created safe spaces the safe spaces are very limited like the, the safe spaces are only available to you know savarna trans people or people lgbtqi people largely from samarna communities which is why i think i want to know from you grace uh, you know how do you think the transgender women community especially those located at the intersections of you know caste and class depri- deprivations like you mentioned from the dalit bahujan and adivasi communities how have they navigated the realm of work and labor because caste is you know so insidious it's passed down from generation to generation so even if we're celebrating a lot of like trans success stories we have to realize that caste also plays a role so for example if we're trying to keep you know even trans women in the same line of work as their forefathers because of casteism that's again like that that's not a cause of celebration exactly so how do you think race uh, trans women especially from dalit bahujan and adivasi background have you know uh, sort of navigated the world of work and labor and caste and what have been their experiences and strategies of survival so when we when we uh, talk about the work space so work space also as i said uh, transphobia it is trans transphobia and the caste is people so here uh, when we talk about the safe space for the dba you know all community you know when we talk about the equality it should be all the people should participate in the main uh, the mainstream space so work space is a mainstream space so here we we don't have a strong protection act the, when we start, when we talk about the labor labor act are the la- labor act include the trans people trans labor no it's not at all and we okay uh, we need uh, to include the labor law and we need a special act for the trans people when we talk about the special act so that special act means you know uh, when we go to the work space the uh, again uh, the you know 100 years before so many women face you know um, uh, in the work space face the discrimination you know in the name of uh, you know uh, the 12 hours working time uh, working hour uh, 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 and and they don't uh, give a uh, leave and they don't give a promotion anything so like that same kind of oppression trans people trans and specifically trans women are also facing you know with a low salary but the you know a long time, long period long hours we need to work when we you know when we raise the question why i you know uh, uh, my colleague and me we are we both are uh, uh, working same hour and same place but they got high salary but i i'm getting very low salary when i raise this issue the immediately the the people who are having the power superior power they are her caste and transphobic people and they were they will say oh no you know you should do, this, this is you know this, this much amount your salary that's it and you need to work and when 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 i when we raise this issue so immediately they will say uh, you know you people doesn't have any kind of opportunity at least i should give this kind of opportunity so this is this is patriarchy thoughts patriarchy and casteist and class thoughts so this kind of situation is it's, it's having super kind of role and when we when we go to the dba community trans so dba community trans doesn't have any kind of privilege to access the work space if we go to the you know to uh, to uh, approach uh, a company and all the companies are in the uh, Uh, urban areas but the rural areas doesn't have any kind of companies and it's like a very very small scale business they are doing and if if also uh, if 
it's the approach that small scale business owners and they were you know they are completely patriarchy and caste people and we need to educate them when i enter and then they will or uh, you know it, uh, they don't have a uh, protection from the you know when i face mental abuse physical abuse and sexual abuse in the what space and how do we protect uh, those kind of situation and it's super super hard and trans women particularly dba community trans women what is okay what are the, what are they doing so uh, most of the rural area trans persons are doing begging and the urban areas doing begging and sex work and rural area trans people who are living in the rural area they are folk performers in the cultural level you know and the religious level performers and they they, they are you know the, all the people are celebrating like a god so they will use that platform and they they believe their religious and they believe their uh, rituals and they are doing and other people the uh, who are dancing in the funeral function and in that also they are facing you know so much of oppression so you know the sexual abuse sexual assault and somebody uh, we don't know who who can come and beat up beat me and when i saw immediately they will go you know uh, they will you know surrounding us and they will tar uh, you know physically they will attack us and we don't have those kind of safe spaces and we are doing this kind of works that that all small small scale work and when we approach to the government when we set up a small scale business and small scale uh, uh, whatever the work is there and they will give you know uh okay we will give a vessels to start a different shop different uh, different thing that's it beyond that they don't think anything we need to why this trans person you know uh, stop their education we don't we, we are not ready to give the education for them because most of the trans people and specifically dba community trans people are uh, dropout students and here we don't have a space to continue their education so we need to protect from the beginning and when we talk about the workspace 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 is when we go to the backing backing is a workspace for us so when we go to the backing six people every day we are meeting different kind of six people both male and female the dominant gender both are having you know both are doing oppression both are throwing oppression for us you know the they, yeah, every day when we go to the backing um uh when uh, when we meet a uh, cis women or cis uh, male and they will attack us and nobody come forward to rescue us because we need to sustain our livelihood that's why we are doing baking but in the baking place also having caste is casteism and transphobia and particularly rural area it's super kind of transphobia super kind of caste uh, caste uh, you know the uh, issues we are facing so okay how how they identify our cars yes here so many opportunities there to identify our car they will ask our name and they will ask our you know which background we are coming from which which you know what is our native place and they will easily identify us and they, they are not ready to give a single paisa to us but they need our blessing they are not ready to raise our voice they are not ready to and now support our rights what the world you people are beaten us you you people are i know murdering us you people are you know giving so much of torturing us you are asking blessings from our hands but in your hand so many bloods are there like my my sisters and brothers we are losing every day we are losing our brothers and sisters how do you ask the blessing for from us so particularly the trans women workspace it's super hot and the intersectionality dba community workspace when we go to the sex uh, sex work every day the sexually you know so many torture sexually torture we face and the patriarchy caste is the arrogant people the 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 male they meant every day we are meeting with them and they will torturing us 
here we don't have a protection from those kind of people so so sex work backing all the work space when we go to the public work space also doesn't have a safe space for us so every where we are going to oppression fight we are facing fight oppression so many hierarchy of oppression where are we in our life we are also want to live with the peaceful life right grace i mean i think some of the questions that you have raised are so hard hitting and so true i really i'm at loss of words to even move to the next question but i do want to bring this up that these last two years have really been very very difficult for everybody especially people uh from the working class people from bba community and therefore especially for transgender people from the dba community just wanted to hear some of your experience of how during covid-19 when so many of us have lost jobs have lost means of survival have lost homes how has the transgender community you know managed this time and what has been the impact of this covid-19 period uh, in terms of health in terms of livelihoods and because there was a lockdown and because of so much of social stigma around you know people and often people from these communities were seen as carriers of virus also not just transgender people but people say domestic workers people from the working class communities people living in slums who were actually not the carriers who were actually the people who got impacted because of you know dominant caste and um, you know well off people bringing the virus from all around but somewhere the stigma was often with the dba community and especially also with the transgender community how have people negotiated this loss of livelihoods loss of uh, you know homes and the stigma that they have faced during these last two years so the the pandemic when we uh, say uh, yes pandemic is affected all over the world so many people but particularly particularly trans it's it's affected trans community lot because trans in, within the trans community the people who are having diabetes they are have we have above 40 uh, 40 years old trans people livelihood we don't have anything and the uh, people who are affected by the hiv and the people uh, who uh, who are as i said the folk artists the baking backers and uh, the sex workers we are all part of with, with this so when we, when you close all the doors it's we completely uh, you know loss our livelihood nothing it's there you know when compared with the cis people at least they are having some savings money you know they will manage everything but here we don't have every day we are doing baking and that baking money it's, it's going to every day our livelihood to wear our cloth to pay our rent and to 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 take a health care you know uh, access the health care access in the private everything so pandemic super super affected the trans community and government also does it focus on that <coughs> community because so when we talk about the central government they gave at uh, about 2 times 1500 rupees but first 1500 rupees for the 7000 people as per the population in the parliamentarian 5 lakh trans people are there in the country but they focus only 7000 people where are others and they calculated the people who are having aadhar card and who are having the basic document but where are the people who doesn't have any kind of document did you focus on those kind of people no not at all and the various states are you know gave a, a relief a fund and relief support no not at all the uh, organization people the various cbo community people they will protect they protected us they raise individual you know crowd source and they will you know support each other they you know the if they need any kind of uh, medical support health support anything but during the pandemic we are facing super kind of transphobia super kind of casteism because accessing the healthcare accessing the you know to to know about the covid situation we don't know 
So here in Tamil Nadu, we don't have, have a separate drive for the trans people. I filed the PIL in the Madras High Court. And after that, we got the judgment. And after that, only they will create a separate drive and the priority for, for the tra- trans people. And now most of the trans people took the vaccination. And uh, the, they don't give any awareness about the, how the vaccination react our bodies, trans bodies. So the, but during the pandemic, financially, economically, socially, we... we oppressed a lot. We face so many discrimination. For example, in Mumbai, a trans woman who commits suicide because who's, who she doesn't have a nutrition food. She is a HIV infected trans, trans woman who she doesn't have a proper food. So that's why she committed suicide. And during the pandemic, the Transgender Protection Act was passed and the rules was passed. They are saying you should, you know, getting the national identity card in the online. Here people are dying, but you are saying online, using, you know, use online platform to apply the thing to getting my basic document. And so many things happen in the pandemic time. And, and other side, the murders also happen. Yeah, trans woman who was an entrepreneur, was, uh, her name is Angida and she's a uh, 60 year old trans woman. Who, uh, who uh, started a uh, trans kitchen and she gave a job opportunity for the cis male and the cis male sexually abused her and she denied that and he cut her head he put her body into the drum and she, uh, he put all the salt inside the drum and he closed after three days when her body, you know, demolished, that smell happened. After three days only, they found her body. And still now she didn't get the justice and they arrested that guy. And after 15 days, he got bail. And now he is freedomly roaming around everywhere. And recently, last month, last month, December, sorry, uh, yeah, January. January month, yeah, trans women who are, who, who brutally murdered, you know, uh, some gundas raped, tortured her and we found her body. And before she died, she called to yet another trans woman and she said, Mom, you should come as soon as possible. I am dying. That voice, it's hearing in every day in our, in our ears. So during, you know, it's happening in the normal time. And the, during the pandemic time, it's super, super kind of oppression and the uh, you know, virtuality murders are happening because of we don't have a strong protection act and the people who are oppressing us they are thinking who is there for these people you people always listening you know oh it's like a you know when we say it's like a tv show you are not ready to come for, uh, coming forward to support us to coming forward to uh, you know to give the solidarity for us now, you know, it's, it's the pandemic, it's put so many step down back for the trans community and specifically GBA community, livelihood. And, and here, the major problem, paying the rent, rental house, already the landlords who are in the, you know, the caste privilege, class privilege, you know, the land right, already they have. And they were, you know, they are saying we don't have any financial support to pay our rent. And the landlords are showing their the patriarchy thoughts, the casteist thoughts. The you know, normally they will, you know, they will put so many conditions. They are putting so many conditions. And the emergency situation, they said, you know, if you doesn't have a money, you should vacate immediately. Where are we go? And the government, as per the Transgender Protection Act. We created a 12 shelter home and that 12 shelter home in the urban areas and the metropolitan areas, where are, our, where are we go? So, so the, the paying the rent, till now it's super, super hard. So many trans persons ready to die because of they don't have any money to pay the rent. So that's why still, you know, ma, ma, when, when you see my Instagram page, or, uh, you know, we started a campaign, fundraising campaign. 
so this kind of situations this kind of when the accessing the health care also it's super difficult super hard because they are transphobic so they immediately come you know uh, not ready to uh, give a treatment for us so this is the situation i mean i again i mean i think pornima and i are both completely i mean we are we are absolutely silent because we are shocked to the core and somewhere we are ashamed to the core because we also are part of this society which as you said has closed all doors and not just closed all doors is continuously inflicting so much of oppression so much of torture mental physical sexual that the whole question of livelihoods is not just of well being but of basic survival and from what you said trans people especially especially from the dalit bahujan adivasi communities they are always living on the edge be it economically or socially and i think it's a time for all of us in society to together reflect on our humanity and on the right of every human being to lead to lead a dignified and decent life and as you said everybody wants peace and dignity do we create an enabling and safe space for every human being to live with peace dignity and basic well being i think i will end with this question because there's nothing else i can summarize i can only feel ashamed i can only feel that it's important for all of us to make that commitment to stand in solidarity to raise our voice with all of you and say that it's important to recognize the rights of all trans people and to ensure that they survive with dignity and survive with equality with all of us so on that note over to you purnima um exactly and i think today's discussion with grace has been so insightful but before we end today's episode i would just like to take a moment again to thank you grace for joining us today and giving us a chance to talk to you thank you for your time this has been such a great and insightful episode so thank you so much for joining us today thank you thank you so much for the man nilanjana and thank you so much to your entire team uh, for giving this opportunity to share my thoughts and thank you thank thanks for lot jai bhim jai savitri jai fatima Grace uh, you've also been doing a lot of ground work and as an activist I know like you are you know constantly on the ground you're doing a lot of work and I want to know uh, could you please share you know where our listeners could follow you online or follow your projects online so uh, 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 we are in the social media uh, you know all the social media so for in facebook uh, my, my my name is there the grace banu you can follow that and the instagram also grace banu is there and the twitter it's a uh, uh, at at the rate of tirunangi that's my account and you should follow and you, you can also follow at trans now and uh, trans rights now collective is our, our movement so you can follow uh, any of this all the accounts thank you so much for sharing that grace uh, to everyone listening you know what to do you know where to follow grace you'll also find all of the relevant links in the podcast description And before we go just a small reminder if you like this episode don't forget to subscribe and rate women and work why it matters on your favorite streaming platform uh the women and work why it matters podcast series is part of the rebuild covid-19 and women in the informal economy project the study is being carried out in Kenya Uganda and India by the international center for research on women with support from the bill and melinda gates foundation and the international development research center This podcast is brought to you by the International Center for Research on Women and Feminism in India. You can find more about ICRW's work on their website www.icrw.org/asia and find them on Twitter and Facebook at ICRW Asia. You can also find more about FII on www.feminisminindia.com or follow FII on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at feminism in India. Bye bye and we'll see you again in the next episode.